the Senate campaign. And that would be Senator Tom Coburn of Oklahoma, who joins us now. Senator, tell us a little bit about him. Good morning. Uh, a real person, uh, mild mannered, uh, very smart. <coughs> Uh, actually gets it. I, you know, I was really amused with your all's conversation. I, I don't think you all get it. Uh, the, the Tea Party I beg your in, pardon. In, in, in the Tea Party. Uh, the Tea Party is every person in America who really is fed up with Washington and recognizes the way we got there was abandoning the core principles of the of our our country but also abandoning the Constitution. And I don't know one Tea Party leader anywhere that wants to eliminate veterans' benefits. I'm appalled. That's not a plank anywhere. It's about how do you deliver those benefits and keep your word to the very people that defended this country. So there, there's a big difference of viewpoint in terms of what a Tea Party means. I think they're one of the best things that ever happened in the country because all of a sudden we're re-engaging hundreds of thousands of people in this country who go to work every day, they obey the law, they pay their taxes, but they're sick and tired of what they see in terms of the waste and stupidity that goes on in Washington. Senator Coburn, it's Lawrence O'Donnell, and uh, I don't have a question for you. I just want to use my brief time here to <laughs> thank you for something that you did recently on the Senate floor. It's something we uh, would rarely see, I think, in today's Senate. Uh, a while ago, you said some things uh, publicly about Harry Reid that you decided uh, upon reflection was uh, intemperate. And you went to the Senate floor and you actually apologized. You, you said you were sorry. Uh, and I just have to tell you that, to, that for someone who used to work in the Senate, to see uh, someone score a point for civility in, in that apology uh, was something that I just want to thank you for. Well, I, I'm not afraid to admit when I'm wrong or, you know, I get out in front of myself, but I'm 64 years of age and I guess I always will a little bit every now and then make some mistakes in terms of my words and I don't mind apologizing. Uh, I mean, I don't know anybody, even even talk show hosts that aren't, don't make errors every now and then. Well, I, I may be the only one, I think. Well, I, it's well, interesting maybe. though, Lawrence, I'm glad you brought that up because I obviously think it's wonderful also, but in the current Tea Party gestalt, wouldn't that work against you in the next election? Well, he somehow Senator you're... Coburn doesn't have another election, well, so that but, might have a lot. You you miss something. You're, you're seeing them totally different to what they are. You ought to come and visit with some people who are just regular Joes that believe the Tea Party's got it right, uh, and they're union members. They're all sort. They're a cross section of people. Because, because you think that would be a problem, most of them are really kind people. You know, when you look at a Tea Party rally and then when they're gone, it's just pristine. They picked it up, they cleaned it. Up. In other words, they're responsible citizens, and they're also pretty bright. They actually get that you've got to have human relations to get along in this world. I don't know. The and they also realize we all make mistakes. So <laughs> the picture you paint, it doesn't come close to anybody I know in the Tea Party, the hundreds of thousands of people I've spoken to and met. Senator Coburn, it's, it's Jonathan Capehart. I want to bring you back to something you said um, when you first came on. You were talking about people in the Tea Party who... Um, um, are fed up with Washington uh, and for the abandonment of the Constitution. Could you please tell me how and when uh, did we abandon the abandon the uh, the Constitution? Yeah, I, I can. You go read Article One, Section Eight, and it gives the enumerated powers. And what you're seeing happen, uh, and, and this has been a progressive thing. The courts have abandoned the Constitution and not holding the Congress accountable to stay within Article One, Section Eight of the Constitution. And this has been something that has been progressive. And the American people get it, and our founders <coughs> got it. And the one part of the balance of power that get, doesn't get talked about and what you're seeing expressed through the Tea Party is the real balance of power that our founders wanted is we the people to hold the government accountable. And that's what's start, gonna start happening in this country. We're, we're $16 trillion in debt. We have totally cut the legs out from underneath our kids and grandkids. And now we're saying there's something wrong with the people who wanna get back to the thing that built this country rather than the thing that tore it down. I'm sorry, uh, uh, Senator, I'm, Article One, Section Eight, I should know this, but I don't. It's, it's the enumerated powers. It, is what the founders gave us as the authority under which we can work. The Constitution is loaded with no's. 
It's not loaded with yeses. And it tells us what we can't do. And here's what it tells us where we can. And we've to to so abandoned and expanded the federal government outside the range, outside the range of what our founders ever thought the federal government would have a hand in. You can't go anywhere that the federal government doesn't have involvement, and wrongly so, because quite frankly, even though we're well-intentioned, we're not very good at doing these things. Senator Sam Stein's in Washington and he has a question for you, Sam. Okay. Yeah, sure. Well, if it's Tea Party chic to rein in the size and spending of government, then I guess by extension, one of the things that Tea Party members should want to do is to chop off some of the fat from the Defense Department budget. But what we see right now is a bunch of Republican senators actually going around the country arguing that the sequester the uh, cuts that will hit the Defense Department budget if no deal is reached should be actually eliminated. So do you look at your colleagues like John McCain, Lindsey Graham and others and say, well, they, they really aren't getting the Tea Party mojo here? Well, the, you, you just mixed two people. You said Tea Party and then you said Republicans. No, there are no, not no, very no, many. No, 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 I know, no, no. I know, but I listen. I heard what you said. The fact is, anybody. it's just because you're a Republican doesn't mean you embrace the principles of the Tea Party. Okay. I, I, I actually be, am a Republican that embraced their principles, and that's what's wrong. I have I've had discussions over the last month with my friend John McCain and Lindsey Graham. I can find the fat in the Pentagon. They're just not willing to do it and they don't believe it's there. I believe it's there, I've actually studied it. I put out a trillion dollars worth of cuts in the Pentagon over the next 10 years. I, we can do that. The point is, is they're worried that we will cut into the actual real thing that will make us, uh, keep us defended. And I understand that concern. Plus, sequestration is stupid. You're cutting good programs <laughs> the same as you're cutting bad. Senator Gail Collins from, uh, you know, Tea Party champion, New York Times. <laughs> <laughs> Senator, you've worked well on a number of occasions with both parties trying to get things going in Congress, trying to create legislation and compromises that will work. But you're going away, uh, Congress is going away without having done anything about the farm bill without having done anything about the post office which is now the postal service which is now in default uh, we've got a budget that just kicks it down the road for another six months without making any changes what's the problem there do you think uh, the problem is an election the, the the election is keeping us from doing what we need to do because no you know if you have 23 senators up you don't want them to take the first hard vote and that's why we haven't had a, a budget. That's why we haven't done anything to address the real problems in this country. You named the post office. Uh, you named the fact that we're going to have sequestration. How about the fact that uh, uh, Social Security disability has got 18 months until it runs out of money? And we have 11 million people on that in this country. There won't be any money. There's no way to get money for it if when it does run out of money. We're not addressing the real problems. That's why I overspoke on Harry Reid. Uh, his leadership is lacking <clears throat> because he's not addressing the real problem. Here, here's what my observation is. America's ready for us to do hard things because they know we're in trouble. And America can do hard things. But when we've done hard things in the past, it's required real leadership. And we don't have it from the president right now, and we don't have it from Republican leaders, and we don't have it from the leader of the Senate. And we need real leadership that stands and calls people to make sacrifice. Hey, Senator, uh, I understand this afternoon you're going to have a, a press conference to talk about uh, a bill that you're proposing, the Audit the Pentagon Act. Speaking yeah. of tough things to do, could you take us just briefly into the world of why we need more billion-dollar aircraft carriers and more billion-dollar airplanes flying around? Well, we don't have any billion-dollar airplanes flying around, but they're pretty expensive. Uh, <clears throat> We do need to have a strong defense, but the, the defense of this country and our ability to defend ourselves is based on our economic strength. And you cannot have a strong defense without a strong, economically viable, growing nation. Uh, <clears throat> what we've done is spent way too much money on, and not had any grown-ups in the room when it comes to major weapon systems. But what are we spending we, too much money on? Well, I, well, let me. This is a long story. If you got time for it, I'm happy to go into it. Um, when we, when somebody gets an idea in the Pentagon, and, and, and they want to say, well, here's a new idea, so they do put out a cost plus contract on research. 
Well, if you're on the other side of that, you say, oh, yummy. <clears throat> you know, here, they want to do something, we'll do it. And they make good money. And then all of a sudden, the idea for a weapon system comes up. And so we start the development of a weapon system. And it's a cost plus contract. Except you have, now you have 50 people saying, well, what if we do this? What if we do this? What if we do this? There's no grown up in the room to say the bells and whistles got to stop, guys. Here's how much we can afford to spend to get to this technology. And, and because there's no grown up or limit on what we, innovation dries up and what we do is we suck the dollars out of the Pentagon, appropriately so, but because there's no adult watching them. And there's a real problem in contracting for major weapon systems in this country because we nobody know, can balance what the technology is against what we can afford. So what happens is we build technology greater than we can afford with very little minimal incremental increase in benefit for the warfighter, but a tremendous benefit yeah. increase for both the, the prestige of the Pentagon and the profits for the companies. Senator Tom Coburn, a grown-up in the United States Senate. Thanks very much for joining us. We hey, you guys it. have a great weekend. You too. Up next, the top Democrat on the House Budget Committee, Congressman Chris Van Hillen, joins the conversation. But first...